Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are having a crazy week ahead right here on this channel. I'm very interested in the Sebastian Rogers case, so I shall be talking about that. And I really want to continue with this series on missing children, children murdered by their adult caretakers or parents. I want to do historic unsolved cases. I want to revisit the murder of Liz Barraza. And then I want to do another installment of Royals and Crime, as I know many of you love it. Over on my main channel, we are going to do some battle this week, but I'll leave the details of that for that channel. So today, I'm just going to revisit the Sebastian Rogers case while taking into consideration information which has come out since my last video. In any case, whether one involving a child or an adult, it certainly helps to get to know the victim a little better, to get behind the victimology, so to speak. It helps to determine whether someone is high risk or not. For instance, if Sebastian was hanging out at the bowling alley with a couple of ruffians every day, his risk factor would have been higher than that of a child who went straight home from school every day. Now, Sebastian's mother and stepfather initially made it sound like it was indeed the protected, lovable, caring life he led. But it wasn't quite true, was it? We have now learned that he was essayed by a child of somewhere between, say, 12 and 15, when he was only eight. We learned that although he was seen by someone, it was not the correctly qualified person he should have been seeing for the trauma he suffered. We also learned that likely due to this, well, let's be gentle and call it an oversight, it appears that Sebastian has displayed some inappropriate behaviours. His father said that on the occasion he would whip out his willy and show it to people, let's say, to compare it, you know, something like, here's mine, let me see yours. Now, had this been a 15-year-old with the emotional age of 15, it would not only have been disturbing, but also rather predatory and disgusting. However, with Sebastian, it is a little different, isn't it? Sebastian is autistic, and although high-functioning, meaning he likely has an above-average intelligence, but he has severe issues when it comes to understanding and controlling emotions. Having that little voice in your head telling you that certain behaviours is not right, not appropriate, and can maybe get you into trouble is absolutely absent with Sebastian. Now, I said it before, and then I heard his father say it as well. Sebastian may be 15, but his emotional age is about 9 or 10. So, as parents, one may see such behavior of a 9-year-old as wrong, but still innocent enough. And one would then go ahead and explain to your child why it is wrong, or you could see it maybe as a red flag if your circumstances are a bit dicey, or if all is hunky-dory in your life and your household, you may even perceive it as wrong or rude, but funny. With a nine or ten-year-old, it is going to depend on your own home life, your own past experiences, etc., as to how you are going to perceive it. However, it is not going to be the end of the world and you are not going to rush your nine-year-old to the nearest juvenile detention centre or a myriad of psychiatrists and lock all your daughters up. But 
Although Sebastian has the emotional growth and maturity of a nine or ten year old, he is living in a fifteen year old body with the hormones of a fifteen year old, and therefore such behavior can and will be perceived as shocking, scary, lewd, etc., by the uninformed. But more than that, it increases Sebastian's risk factor, doesn't it? It is an unfortunate fact of life that there are some real, real creeps out there. Some very sick puppies. So sick, their parents should have disposed of them before they inflicted them on the world. (laughs) Now, listen up. I obviously don't mean it literally because I feed stray dogs who raise their hair at me. If an insect is larger than, say, five millimeters, he gets caught and put outside very gently to go live his life. So please, do not think I'm seriously proposing killing your children or your child just because he's badly behaved. No, 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 please. If your kid is a little different, please, please, please get him or her the help they need. Anyway, with such behaviors as Sebastian allegedly displayed, there is always the possibility that his childish, childlike action may have been misunderstood or mistaken for a come on or something else. Unfortunately, there are people who will not look at Sebastian's small, frail stature and think for themselves, ugh, the silly kid. No, they will exploit it and there are others who will recognize him as a kid and for whom that in itself will be an attraction. Having said all of this, Had there been someone like that, how did he, and I'm assuming it's a he, it could be a she, get Sebastian to come outside that night? I'm sure that if he called Sebastian or Sebastian called him, the cops would have known by now who it was because Sebastian left his phone behind. So how else did he or she get Sebastian out of the house. Did they set a time earlier, make a date earlier during the day? So, if they did, who did Sebastian come across that day, that Sunday, who could have set up such a date? I mean, could it have happened at the grocer, the bowling alley, or at the restaurant? If Katie is convinced, that Sebastian was abducted, then she better start remembering the faces of the people Sebastian had interaction with, I mean, outside of the family that day. Because if it was a runaway slash abduction scenario, then it was planned and targeted. Sebastian did not go outside without shoes, something warm, his phone, and whatever else, and waited for hours and hours, and nor is there any trace that he was indeed taken from his bed. Well, I mean, he could have been, but not by a stranger, because if it was an absolute stranger, I'm sure Sebastian would have had questions or made a noise. Had Sebastian been abducted when he took the trash out, Katie would have known. And talking about trash, I do not buy that those lights on the one video are indeed the trash being collected. Obviously, I do not know about America, but I have not heard of garbage being collected at 3 a.m. before. Usually, garbage collection is a rather noisy affair, and I 
just can't see it being done at three in the morning, particularly in an area which is not well lit with ample street lights, etc. No, I somehow think that is a story, a fake one, just to make us look elsewhere. The scent tracking and even the footprint also sounds rather dodgy. I do believe that Max tracked someone, but not Sebastian. I think it is or was likely someone else from the household, or then something else. Tracks, a smell, does not just vanish, not like that. The other alternative, of course, is that was Sebastian perhaps picked up at the pond? Was that the meeting place and he was picked up there? Because the pond had been drained and the mud searched and there was nothing. So whoever's track it was likely got into a vehicle parked there at the pond. Could it thus have been Sebastian after all? Has anyone seen a vehicle parked near the pond? (laughs) You see, there is so much missing from Sebastian's story that it is hard to make an educated guess. But I can tell you where I stand on all of this. I think or I feel that Sebastian either did not come home from the Texas Roadhouse or he did come home. But he did not leave again, at least not alive or conscious. I think his mom phoned Chris first because she needed advice, someone to tell her what to do next. Of course, like everyone else, I am hoping Sebastian ran off, maybe after a fight with his mother, and that he is hiding out somewhere. But unfortunately, I do not think so. In one of Jail R's videos, he talks about someone sending him and law enforcement a tip and stating that they think they saw Sebastian in a dark colored three quarter ton Chevy truck at a gas station at about 5 a.m. on the 26th. So, has this been followed up yet? Could the tag be seen on surveillance cameras? These are all questions they are not answering at the moment. Questions which I think are important as if it was indeed Sebastian in that truck, then all the searches going on at the moment are pointless and a waste of time because Clearly, then, Sebastian is not in the area anymore. So I think it is absolutely necessary that law enforcement come clean and share, share whatever they have and just a tad more. They are quick to blame social media for everything which goes wrong instead of using social media and the public to help them solve the case. So guys, tonight I will go sleuthing a little on Facebook and other platforms and see whether we can get any closer to what could have happened to Sebastian. So, until we meet on the next video, which will not be about Sebastian, unless something happens between today and tomorrow. (laughs) Um, I mean, if something does happen which is newsworthy, I will come back with the Sebastian story, but otherwise I'm going to do one of my other videos, whichever one. Okay, so please, until then, take good care of yourself and each other. Bye.